All right, so in this video, we're going to look at a actual example of a transmission line and how we can use the Smith chart to solve certain parameters of interest. So here we have a lossless transmission line with a characteristic impedance set not of 50 ohms. It's 30 meters long and it operates at 2 megahertz. The line is terminated with a load of 60 plus J40 ohms. It says if the speed U is equal to 0 0.6 times the speed of light, find the reflection coefficient, the standing wave ratio, and the input impedance. So, whenever we're solving questions like this, we'll always start with the normalized impedance. Okay, so let's find ZL bar to represent normalized. And so we know this is going to be equal to ZL over Z naught. ZL, we know, is 60 plus J40. Z naught, we know, is 50. So this thing becomes 1.2 plus J 0 0.8. Okay? So now let's go ahead and take a look at our Smith chart. So if we look at the Smith chart, we have 1.2 as our real and 0.8 as our imaginary. So 0.8 on the imaginary is actually this circle right here. Okay. Now 1.2 on the real is actually this circle right here. So now where do these two intersect? They intersect right at this point here. So I'll get rid of these just to make sure it's not super convoluted. But we know that this point here is Z. L, and we'll put a bar there for normalized. Okay, so now, though usually the next step what we do is we need to find the reflection coefficient. Well, we need to find that in this question anyways. But how do we do that? So what I've gone ahead and done here initially beforehand is I've drawn here these lines and such. Well, this one, I guess we don't really need to do that. We can just get rid of you, and we can redraw a line from here the origin to that point like so and so essentially what we need to do is take this line this line is going to be the magnitude of our reflection coefficient if I take this line and I actually measure along the bottom here let's notice these scales are here and this one right here tells us that's the reflection coefficient. So I measure along this line. I uh, usually start from the middle. Some of them you can start from either side. It depends on the Smith chart you're using, really. So we'll start from the middle. We'll measure this line with a ruler, this line here that I've drawn, this red one. And what we'll do is we'll measure that thing's length, and then we'll take that length and we'll measure it across here. So it'll be some value across here. <clears throat> however long it is, and in doing so, what we will find, I mean, if I measure this one here and I draw it at the bottom, it's going to be a little complicated. So what I've done is I've done it on paper, and I've actually gone ahead and measured it. If you actually measure, what you will find is that this um, line is actually corresponds to a 0 0.35 approximately. Uh, well, let's write approximately then approximately 0 0.35 if I take that line and I come along this so in this case it'll be the bottom most because if you notice here reflection coefficient is this last line so 0 0.35 is it, the, the whole thing line actually is going to be about something like this okay so that's all fine and dandy relatively simple enough so how do we find the angle the angle is very simple we literally take a protractor we place it on with the origin of our protractor at the origin of the smith chart and we measure this angle here measuring that angle will give us the angle of the uh, the reflection coefficient so let's call this thing theta gamma and i will say that theta gamma is actually equal to 56 so that my reflection coefficient is 0 0.35 angle 56 okay so i mean that's those are the first couple of steps really the next thing we need to do is draw the swr circle or the constant s circle or whatever you want to call it really so i've gone ahead and i've done this beforehand just because i didn't want to actually sit here and struggle with it 
uh, while recording this. So that right there is a circle of constant, uh, well, more or less, I would say, is constant S circle. I mean, you're allowed to be off by a little bit. No one's going to hold a gun to your head if the answer is 1.1 and you get 1.2 or something like that. Uh, these are rough sort of things to understand trends more than specific values. So if I look at this thing and I want to find the SWR um, for part B, so this was part A, part B is SWR. Now if you recall from the previous video, or the video on the Smith chart basics, the SWR is going to be this point right here. So the SWR is the point where that S circle, which is the one that runs through the load impedance, uh, is is up the, is along the real axis, and so this thing here is the real axis, and well, the whole top thing is the imaginary axis. Those those weird circles. There's no singular point where I can say it's imaginary or the, yeah, the imaginary axis. But the real axis is theta. Or sorry, gamma r is along this horizontal axis. So if I say S W R, I'll say is two, approximately two. Uh, approximately two. You can call it 2.1. I'd say I would even say, go as far as saying like 2.3 is uh, well, let's say 2.1, 2.2, or 2.3. So it can be any one of these. It can be in a little area. So if you pick any of these uh, as your answer, uh, I would I would still give it you know the right thing. I mean if 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 this is the circle you have, then all of a sudden you're saying SWR equals eight. Okay, you have a problem. Uh, but if you're 2, 1.9 even, 2.1, 2.05, something like that, you should be fine. Uh, next part is the input impedance. Now this part is a little more involved. So we want the input impedance. Now how do we find the input impedance? So to find the input impedance, first we need to find uh, how long the line is in terms of wavelengths. So first we need to find the wavelength. So we have lambda is going to equal u over f. Now this is basic. Um, wave theory. So if you recall, this is actually 0 0.6 times C. C is 3 times 10 to the 8. The frequency is given as 2 megahertz, so 2 times 10 to the 6 should be given in the question. It is. Um, and now, so if we actually divide this out, you'll find this is 90 meters. Okay, so now we need to convert the length of the line into wavelengths. So we want to know how long the line is in terms of wavelengths, because the Smith chart we define in terms of wavelengths. So then we can say that, let's just call it L equals 30 meters, right? And so now if I divide 30 by the 90, then I should know how long it is in terms of wavelengths. So uh, what I have here is, let's say L lambda we'll call, which is L in terms of wavelengths, uh, is actually going to be L divided by lambda, which is going to be 30 over 90, right? So this is a third, 1 over 3. So essentially what this means is that L equals lambda over 3, right? So this is really the useful thing to realize. I can write 0 0.33333, but, you know, let's not do that. Um, just because this way it will be relatively simple. So if you recall in the previous, uh, in the Smith chart basics video, we talked about the single revolution, uh, single revolution around the Smith chart is lambda over 2, right? So the whole thing is lambda over 2, and... What that means is one revolution is 360 degrees. So if lambda over 2, so let's say so, lambda over 2 equals 360, then lambda itself is going to be 720. So now what's lambda over 3? Then lambda over 3 is going to be 240. So I know that my line is in terms of wavelengths and all that, in all the terms of degrees and all this kind of stuff, is 240 degrees if I want to actually represent it on this um, Smith chart here. So, what happens here now? So, if I am at my load here in, in this ZL, this is my load, 
what that means is if I were to consider, just imagine for a sec, my transmission line looks something like this. Okay. So let's call this point one. So this is point one. Okay. Now, as I travel from point one back to, let's call it point two, on my Smith chart, I'm actually going to be traveling along this thing like this. Because if you look closely, you'll find this wavelengths towards generator. And if I want to go towards my generator, then I must travel in the clockwise direction. And if I want to find my input impedance, then I must go towards my generator. So I need to find where my generator is, and I need to find the impedance at my generator. I will have my input impedance. So how far do I need to travel? That's the next question. The, we've already answered that here. So I need to travel 240 degrees. Okay, so at this point, I'm. we said theta r equaled 56. Well, when I used my protractor, I calculated 56. You can call it 60. You can call it 55. I'm going to go with 56. Okay, so if I go from there, 56. So 56 um, will be to here. So if I come to my horizontal, I'll have gone 56. Then if I go all the way across to the other side of the horizontal, I'll have gone 56 plus 180. So that's 6, 3, 1, 2, 236. So I need to go about 4 degrees higher now. So I don't know, 4 degrees. You can actually look at it if you want on your, um, on your protractor. I'm just going to eyeball it and say that 4 degrees will be, if that's 170, let's call it this point right here. So let's get rid of this line, just so it's not all convoluted and such. So let's draw a line straight from the origin to that point. Well, that's not very straight, is it? So what we can do then, if that's going to be the case, because it's, it's locking to the actual grids, what we can do is, well, we can first of all, we can try again always. Much better. So let's take that. I'll take it. No problem. So I'm going to call this point what? Let's call it Z in. Okay. So the impedance of the point Z in is going to have to be the point on this S circle. So we want to stay on this S circle because this S circle is unique to this problem. Okay. So I'm going to call this Z. Well, I've already used purple. I should probably use a different color. Uh, let's use this one then here. So this point here is going to be Z in. So now I just need to read that value of. Uh, here you probably can't see it as clearly. Well, it's not too bad, I guess. But Z in, based on that, Z in is actually 0 0.47. Well, let's call it 0 0.5, just because it looks closer to 0 0.5 than anything else. Let's go 0 0.5, and then it has some inductive component to it as well. What's that inductive component? That inductive component, so if this is 0, we'll call that 0.2468-ish. Uh, we can call that 0. Point, well, that's 0 0.1, so it's an eighth of 0 0.1. We'll call it 0.05-ish. It's actually a little bit lower, so we'll say 0 0.04 plus J 0 0.04. So like you can see, I mean, these values that I'm picking aren't super hardcore, like specific values. They're asking for relatively close values in the area. I mean, it doesn't like if you had 0 0.04 and the actual number should have been 0 0.09 if I calculated it by hand, nobody's going to hold a gun to your head and say, oh, you know, this uh, this number is wrong. Uh, these are supposed to, the, the, the Smith charts used to observe the trend and to observe the relationship between it on a larger scale as opposed to the little smaller details. So, since we want the input impedance and not the input normalized impedance, then Zn is going to be Z0 times Zn normalized. I should probably add this bar here. 
So this is going to be equal to 0.5 plus j 0 0.04, I called it. Okay, times 50. So now what do we get? We get 50 times 0.5. So 50 times 0.5 is just 50 times a half, which is 25, I hope. And what else do we get? We get j times uh, 0.4 times, sorry, 0 0.04 times 50. So plus j 0 0.04 times 50 is just going to be uh, 0.2. I'm sorry, it's going to be 2, not 0.2. Um, and so this is our impedance in ohms. Don't forget your units. So um, just to recap, how do we actually do this thing? What did we do? We drew this circle. Well, first we drew a full drawn circle. We found this point of intersection after normalizing our impedance. After we found this point, we drew a line to that point, measured the length of that line, used these scales along the bottom, which should be given to you in your Smith chart, once we used these scales, we were able to determine the magnitude of the reflection coefficient as such, 0 0.35 was what I calculated, or what I measured. Um, then what we did was we measured the angle between the real axis and this uh, line that we had drawn from the origin to our load. Um, once we did that, we were able to draw a circle of the same radius of this reflection coefficient, which was our S circle. To calculate or to determine the SWR, we simply found the point where the S circle intersected with the real axis. And then the last part asked us to find the input impedance. Before finding the input impedance, we had to convert the length of the line, like we did here. We converted the length of the line into a fraction of wavelengths or a number of degrees. So once we did that, we were able to travel from the load to the actual generator. So if you go from ZL all the way along here to the source or the generator, whatever you want to call it, uh, and we took, well, let's let's make it a little clearer. Maybe we can do that. Maybe that'll help. So we went down this thing like this until we got to our load. Or sorry, until we got to our source. So we went from the source to the load, drew a line through that all the way to the end so we can actually read this value off. Um, and once we were there, we found our Z in. Now keep in mind that this Z in has to be on the same circle as uh, as ZL. Otherwise, we're not talking about the same problem anymore. So in order to keep the problem consistent, we stay on this S circle the entire time. Um, and so that gave us the value of Z in. Norm that, but that was the normalized value of Z in. To find the actual value of Z in, we would have had to multiply it by Z naught, which we did in this last step here. So that is a simple, relatively simple um, question on, on the, using the Smith chart. Uh, I hope you found this to be useful. I will be doing more. Uh, they will be uploaded in the, in the future. More problems on the Smith chart and maybe more complicated problems on the Smith chart as well. Um, so if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we will have more videos for you. And as the videos come along, we will have updates for you as well. So we'll see you in the next one.